because triggers fire as a result of an event, an insert, update, or delete command. And it's possible to do insert, update, and delete commands inside of triggers. That can open up a Pandora's box of triggers, firing, triggers, firing, triggers. And you can control this both in a nested and a recursive manner. Enabling nested triggers is done on a server-wide basis. You can do it with code here or in Object Explorer on the server property page. And I'll just run this. And it says you have to run reconfigure afterwards just to make sure it, the change takes effect. When nested triggers is turned on, then trigger A, which updates another table, would allow the triggers on that other table to fire, which would be a nested trigger. A recursive trigger is also a nested trigger, except that it means that that table itself, that same trigger, can fire more than once. A common example of a recursive trigger is the modified column on a table. So we'll switch over to OBX Kites database, and I'll make sure recursive triggers is turned on. And note this is a database setting, not a server-wide setting. I'm going to add a couple of columns to the product table. This will give us a created and modified column to capture the created date when a row is created. And it'll do this just by having the default of get date, and then the modified date. And then every time we modify that row, we want to update that modified date. And a trigger is the perfect place to do this. But since that trigger is going to be modifying that same row, it's going to be a recursive trigger. And we want to make sure the trigger does not become a runaway recursive trigger, where an update to a product fires the trigger, which modifies the date. That's an update to the row, which could just run on and recursively ad infinitum attempt to modify this until it gets to the recursive level and blows up at 32. So let's go ahead and walk through this trigger before we execute it. So the trigger fires on every update to the product table. And the first piece of real code checks the trigger nest level function, which tells us how many nested levels deep we've gotten, and says if the trigger nest level is greater than 1, meaning we're about to run this trigger for a second time, then we'll return. And this trigger ends right there preventing a runaway trigger. And just for demo purposes, we can see what's happening. I'm going to print out the trigger nest level. So we'll see 1 the first time it runs. Then we'll see 2. Then the trigger nest level is greater than 1. So we return, and it ends out. So the first line of code here, this if trigger nest level is greater than 1 return, is functioning only to prevent the runaway recursive trigger problem. The second part of the code is this if and then a begin end block. And what this if is doing is making sure no one's manually updating the created or modified columns, because we want these to just be system updated columns. So if created or modified is updated by any update command outside of this trigger being at nest level 1, we'll go ahead and fail that update, doing a raise error, a rollback to undo their change, and a return to exit out of the trigger right there. So now that we know that this execution of the trigger is valid, we'll go ahead and do the update. And it's update product set modified to get date. And then here's another key part. From product, join inserted on product equals product for product ID. So what this is doing is for every row in the inserted table, so we can handle multiple rows, it joins to the product table and updates those rows in the product table. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and test this. Go ahead and create the trigger. And now, if we update, we'll take product 1002, change the product name to modified trigger. And there's our 1 and 2, showing us the nest level. And if we select, so the created date has the default get date timestamp of when we added the columns just a few moments ago. And then here's the modified date of this time right now when I went ahead and updated the product name. Just to see it update. I'll highlight these together and execute them as a single batch. And you can see the modified date being updated.